How are you doing after the weekend? That was a pretty crazy couple of days. Yeah, it was, uh, was crazy, yeah. Um, I, I thought for sort of large spells that Liverpool game we performed really well. Um, we started off really well, sort of first five minutes maybe could have went 1 0 up, but um, Liverpool are full of quality players and uh, they've scored two, two really good goals. But I was proud of the lads, I think in years gone by we probably could have folded then and maybe got done five or six, but to keep that at two and and sort of have the opportunities that we did to, to get back in, I thought we performed really well. It's one, it's one of the back five, Dan, that hasn't been changed for a, for a long mm. time. How are you feeling now that you've lost one in the, in the shape of the I think we're lucky that through, like, in the club, we've got experienced goalkeepers in. Obviously, Loz has played for Liverpool. He's played in very big games, Champions League finals. Um, Mark's played at, um, been involved at Wembley with Carlisle a few times. He's been there, so I think we're lucky that we've got players of experience in that position um, the way we play on a Saturday is the way we train all week um, so I'm confident in the lads that they're, they're, they're both match ready um, so whoever will play I'm sure will put in a very good performance. What were, what were the conversations with Carius like since you guys have returned back in after the weekend because I guess it would been something he wasn't expecting to happen. No of course not um, I haven't spoken to him loads one on one to be honest but yeah you can imagine it's just where he's probably not thought he was going to be involved that sort of uh, in the game to, to then be starting it's just funny how football works isn't it and you know more than anyone that Newcastle United do things a difficult way mm. it would be a crazy situation if Harris came in had a great game in the final after what's happened in, in the back it would be very Newcastle United yeah, it would be yeah. and uh, I think that's what we love in football we love a story like that I think throughout the history of sort of the Premier League and what we've done it's littered with stories like that so um, for that to happen would be amazing, but as I've said before, we're, it's, a, it's no lie that Pope will be a big miss. He's, he's done very, uh, very, very good things for this season and been a, a big part of why we've been so defensively solid. But we're sort of confident in the squad that we've got. That we've got players that can that can come in and, and do the job when he's not there. A lot of the lads won't have played at Wembley before. Mm. I'm just chatting to Kieran there, who's played there many a time. Hey, you've played there, have you not? Mm. Yeah, right, I did, yeah. yeah, scored there. But yeah, but you scored there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah my, my mates always uh, wind us up saying that it was an assist because it was a bit of a dubious goal, but <laughs> it went down as my goal, so I'll take it. Yeah, sure. But yeah, I think it's um, having that experience of being there. I don't think people realise um, sort of how big the stadium is. The pitch is massive. Um, like it's a real sort of energy sap. I was playing there before. I remember ten minutes in, I was ready to come off. So. <laughs> Um, just sort of passing that experience on to the lads um, who maybe haven't played there. I know we've got a lot of internationals who have played in big games, but um, Wembley's special, and um, I think it's to, to try and sort of get all of that stuff out of the way that's not really relevant to the game. I think it's important that you can sort of pass on that experience to the boys. And we're obviously talking to you last week, and, and you were you were talking about the Liverpool game, but obviously the cup final was just there at the mm. back of your mind. I think it's been the same whenever we speak to the manager as well. Is it nice that just that's all out the way now and just? focus is now just firmly on what's going to be the biggest game in, in the last 25 years. Yeah definitely I think it's it's been hard to sort of just have that focus on on the games that have been in the past those three Premier League games because as you've said it's a huge um, moment for the club and for and for the city so it's, it has been hard not to be distracted by it a little bit but as I said I'm just happy that we are here this week and we can just solely focus on this and as I said, I've been asked a few times where I'm feeling nervous about it, but I'm really not. I feel quite relaxed about it. I think that's just playing for how long I've played, and um, I just think that experience, just you, you know, it's just a, another game. But maybe as I'm just about to go out, it might not be like that. Yeah. <laughs> that's how I feel now. Yeah, I was going to say, if you were 22, 23, do you think you would feel different? Do you think that's just the years of working up the levels almost yeah. to get yourself to this point? Yeah, 100%. I think. Um, I wish I knew back then sort of all the experience that I've had now because I would have had a totally different career but um, I think those are things that you've got to learn and I think we're quite lucky that we're, we've got a good mixture in the group of experienced lads who've played at the very top level like Kieran and Pope, uh, international lads who played at the World Cup and then we've got a few few young lads coming through who will probably be for the same uh, the same for them, they probably won't realise the sort of magnitude of the occasion and, and just sort of play with that freedom. And how does it work with your friends and family because obviously they're all big Newcastle fans mm. as well. Do you, do you speak to them this week? Do you shut them out? Do you have to just kind of do it in dispatches? What do you do to try and keep yourself focused on the on the match on Sunday? I think I just try and keep it as normal as possible. Um, try and treat it as just just another game. Like we've got our tickets sorted out now, so once they're dished out, that's me just Fetch focusing on. on the game. <laughs> yeah, that's once they're done, everyone can if they get there, they get there. They don't, they don't. That's their problem. So um, yeah, I think it's just been nice to 
get all of that out of the way now for the next sort of three, four days. It's just purely focused on on Man United, just like it would be would be any other week. Dan, I would imagine because of the clamour for tickets from friends and family, you've arguably maybe felt more pressure with that than you did <laughs> looking ahead to this game. Yeah, yeah a little bit. Um, I think people have been quite good, to be honest. I think they've known that I would have only gotten a limited number of tickets and I had a lot of people that I needed to sort out. So um, I've had a few texts here and there, um, but I think the majority have probably went through family family to get to me and, and they've pushed them back. So, yeah, as I said, I've got a lot of people who come to games every single week, so I've just tried to sort them out as, um, as, as fairly as possible. You will know more than anyone else what this game means for not just the football club but the city I mean you know when you're out and about can you can you sense that in the air you know kind of the, the desperation for success yeah you can even I was uh, going to do bits at the stadium last week and pull up the traffic lights and the guy telling us put my window down and having a follow-on conversation mm. about how like much it would mean to the city and I know that um, I think all the Geordie lads know that, that in, the, uh, in the club and it's just Getting that message across to the lads, which, which to be fair, I think they all understand sort of the, the magnitude of it as well. Um, there's been a lot of teams um, that I grew up watching, sort of the Kevin Keegan entertainers, the Bobby Robson teams that have get into this stage, but maybe just couldn't quite get over over that line. So to have the opportunity to do it um, on Sunday, I sort of I do feel very lucky. You talk about obviously the, the younger, you know, when you were younger watching um, the Bobby Robson team. Mm. I mean, can you remember the? The 1999 FA Cup final against Manchester United? No, I've got to say before, I can't remember the final. I probably just blocked it out. Um, <laughs> the last uh, bit of Wembley I remember was when Rob Lee scored against Chelsea because I was at that game. Um, but I just remember the build-up to, to the final you're talking about, just the stuff that I see now, like all of the stuffs and shop windows and people with flags out and just even driving into there, like passing pubs, they've all got black and white flags up. So I think it's just sort of that cup fever um, type thing. I remember going into school with me a little going with a Newcastle shirt on, I had a flag and nails were painted black and white and just anything you could do to get black and white. I probably had stripes in my hair and all sorts. <laughs> and, um, but yeah, and it's just sort of that sort of generation of players inspired me and, and all of uh, my schoolmates to, to want to play for Newcastle and, um, and be professional footballers. So hopefully we can have the, a similar effect to, to them. Talk about obviously the town being decorated now, but can you imagine what it'll be like if you actually win? I know, and I can't really. I try not to think about it too much because I think you can sort of let the let that get the better of you. But um, yeah, it'll be it'll be amazing, amazing if we do. I can't really sort of wrap my head around what the celebrations um, would be like, but I know there'll be however many thousand in Wembley and sort of however many thousand in London that weekend. Anyone, anyone, anyone will be left in Newcastle, so. Yeah, it's a, it'll be a great weekend for, for us as players, but, but the city as well, so really hope we can get it done. And if you win, the town really will be painted black and white in celebration? It will be, yeah, I've said that. You'll, I'll be in me full strip with me strappings on and everything right the way till next to the game after, so I'm looking forward to it. I think there's a, I think there's a window actually in Blythe already with you in it. I've seen, I went past <laughs> it the other day. To be fair. There's, there's definitely t-shirts in the back page because I've seen Is them. There? Yeah, 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 yeah I, had a, I had a few texts, um, different pieces. So I've, I've seen, I've seen, I've seen all of them to be honest. So it's, it's class, it's strange, pretty surreal, like seeing yourself on a shop window. But um, yeah, class. Is that a pinch yourself thing? Yeah, as I said, I try not to think about it too much because I think you can think, wow, well, like, this is a bit surreal. But um, yeah, I said it would have been similar when I was a kid and you were seeing all these players up on shop windows then. So yeah, it is a bit pinch yourself. And Andrew from the BBC. I mean, you say you're lucky to be in, in the in the team and being there at Wembley, but this is so much more. It's almost like a fairy tale because you're a, a Geordie, a dive in the wool Newcastle fan mm. all your life. So it must mean that extra, extra, something extra. Yeah, I think so. I think first of all, when you grow up being a, a Geordie, you, you sort of realise how much the club means to the city, and do you want to play for Newcastle, which I was lucky to do, but getting towards the latter time of my career and score at the Gallagher, which I was lucky enough to do as well, so to get to a cup final and have that opportunity to, to go and win it and knowing that you'll be sort of in the history books for the club that you that you grew up loving and supporting, um, uh, it'll be really special. What's it been like the last few Premier League games? I mean, people are worried that the cup final's been a distraction, mm. but when you're actually playing in the moment, do you, I mean, is there, do you still go 100 and 101% still making those tackles, mm. even though there might be that fear of injury or, or, or a booking red card. I think you've got to. Um, 
I think when you when you don't, those are the times when you do normally get injured when you're sort of like pulling out challenges a little bit. Um, but I've never I've never done that during my career. Every time I go out, I go out as if it's sort of the last time I'll be on a pitch because I think you, you never know what's going to happen. So, um, and to be honest, I've been really proud of the lads with the, with the last three games. I think with the what we spoke about the magnitude of the game coming up and um, having that distraction to to go into those games and I know we probably haven't gotten the results that we wanted but especially that West Ham game, the, the high of that Southampton game to then have to go in and play again on the Saturday knowing that the crowd might be a little bit flat um, and, and people will be already looking at the final, I was sort of really proud of the lads and, and even Saturday we played a, a lot of um, a lot of time with 10 men um, after we conceded two early goals so I was uh, really, really happy for the boys. Would you be aware that, there's, that you know, optimism amongst the fans has just diminished a bit mm. in the last few weeks and days. I imagine that's not an issue for you. You, you, you. It doesn't affect you. No, not at all. I don't think it should. The, the optimism shouldn't have, have diminished. I think that's just football in general and probably us as a fan base at Newcastle. I think we can get so excited when things are going well and then when it starts going not so well, we always get really down. I think that's just the, the way that we always are. But as I said, our, our confidence hasn't been knocked by things that have happened. Um, um, Results-wise, we still think that we're, we're playing at a, at a very good level. Um, and said so this, this game's just the same as the rest. We'll, we'll attack it just like we've done every single game this season. Thank you very much. Hi, Dan Shinky from Sky News. Um, videos of your dances in the dressing room always do well on social media. How good is the team spirit across this group going into a game like this? Yeah, amazing. I think that's what I noticed when I first came here. Um, I've been round teams when I came here. We're obviously in the relegation zone, so I've been round teams there before, and I think it can be quite sort of defensive. Everyone sort of pointing the blame to each other. But as soon as I came in here, I noticed how together the team was. Even the, the lads who weren't playing, they were always pushing the lads, uh, the starting eleven, to, to get results. So I've always known when I got here that it was a, it was a really good team. And, um, this season has just kicked on some more. I think you see like the photographs we do after the after the game when we win games and. I'll not be the only player that's danced, but probably the only one that's done it live on uh, mm -hmm. live on Sky. <laughs> you just haven't seen those videos. So yeah, it's a um, really good team spirit, yeah. And I think it's something that we've worked hard to get to and something that the gaff has really worked hard to, to bring to the club as well. So um, as I said, yeah, maybe the results haven't been what we've wanted the last couple of games, but that hasn't knocked uh, the confidence or, or the team spirit. You mentioned you know, how much this means to the area, Newcastle, mm -hmm. Blythe, we're here from everywhere here. I just wanted to ask if there are any particular moments which you remember conversations, moments where people have stopped you and talked about the game just spring to mind. It's well, I've just been stopped a few times. I, I said before, like coming into the stadium last week and people are I pulled up the traffic lights and people are putting the window down just saying sort of our make sure the lads know how much of a big deal this is for, for, for the city and I know that, I know that, Longy knows that. Uh, all the Geordies and all that, but it's just trying to sort of get that message across to the lads, which, as I said before, we've got a very good team here and they've got a good understanding of the city and the, and the love playing here. So, um, yeah, just sort of getting that message across. I know you want to think about winning this game, but what's going through your head before you walk out of Wembley, having watched Newcastle there, having played there yourself as well, mm. and now getting a chance to, to make history? Yeah, to be honest, I haven't really thought too much about the, the history of it. Um, I know that's been a long time that we've... Um, not won anything, but that to me at the moment is irrelevant. Uh, I think it's a different team at a, at a different time. Um, every single time that we went out this season, we've went to attack it, whether that was League Cup, FA Cup, Premier League, whether that was City, Bournemouth, Wolves, whoever we're playing, that doesn't change. Um, on Sunday, I know that Man United are, are a very good team, got a great manager and full of big international players um, who've done it on the big stage before but that's the, I think that's the beauty of football that over 90 minutes um, us on my day it can beat Man United. Like I was saying earlier lots of people from Newcastle thousands of people head mm. down to watch the game have you got a message to the fans coming down to support you? Yeah just thank you for your support um, I hope you have a have a sort of a great weekend stay out of trouble <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah and um, we we'll, we'll really appreciate your support. Dan, how different do you feel as a player compared to when you were a fan? Now that you're here now, are you wearing this? Loads. I was saying to Longy uh, before, like, I kind of wish that I was a fan at this point. <laughs> I know it's like stupid to say, but like, because we're, we're players, we're, we're so focused on the game that we can't really... So all of this I, like doesn't affect us because I don't really try to let it affect us, if you know what I mean. I'm solely focused on the game where 
if I was a fan, I'd be going down on Friday with my mates. You'd be you'd be doing bits on Sunday. I'd be in the crowd where everyone sort of chanting. So, like you, you do sometimes think, oh, it'd be class being a fan. But obviously, I'm in a very privileged position. Um, and I'd, as I said, I, I, I don't play with the pressure and all that. I'm a local lad, and um, the, the fans are wanting to win. It's just sort of that added responsibility. But as I said, we'll be passing that on to the boys. And you mentioned the dancing just a moment ago. Have you got anything planned? Should you win? <laughs> should, you, should you score? Yeah, no, the nothing. Uh, uh, nothing planned. It'll probably just be freestyling. It'll probably just play <laughs> FIFA when you just hit loads of buttons and see what comes <laughs> up. But um, yeah, it would be it would be amazing to, to, to score there. Anyway. Would they, are days like this, Dan, sort of part of the reason you wanted to come back to the club? You know, when the, the offer was made in the January, mm. the chance to, to, you know, eventually take Newcastle to Wembley. Yeah, and I think we've, that's been we sort of trajectory since the the, the new owners come in. Um, I think everyone's sort of been pulling in the same direction, whether that's sort of players, the staff, the, the, the city, and hopefully this isn't just the one-off that we've made this final to sort of step and stone and a catalyst to, to more finals over the years. We've seen what's sort of happened with other teams who've been taken over and that's what that's what we want to happen and sort of feel, get the club back to where we feel it should be.